<clears throat> All right, you're good to go. Have a nice meeting. Thank, Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Good morning. I'm calling the June 29th, 2020 meeting of the Town Service and Outreach Committee to order at 9.32. Uh, Governor Baker's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law allows us to hold this virtual meeting of the TSO. Um, I'll now call on the committee members by name to check and make sure that they can hear us and we can hear them. Um, uh, Alyssa Brewer. Good morning. Darcy Duma, that's me. Dorothy Pam. Hello. Evan Ross. Hi. George Ryan. I'm here. Okay. Uh, those assisting the meeting will be monitoring committee member connections and if necessary, we'll pause the meeting until we're reconnected. We request that everyone be patient with the process. So I'm just going to check and see if we have any public. We just, we have Art. Um, and he is not raising his hand. So we will, we do have one, uh, uh, we do have another, oops, um, wait a minute here, I'm raising my own hand. Um, we do have another public comment period at the end. So if someone shows up who wants to make public comment, they can do so then. Um, okay, so we'll, since there's no public comment, we'll move on to the action items. And the first action item is, the uh, town manager appointments of the elementary school building committee. Last week, uh, we recommended that the town council approve a list of seven town and school department staff for appointment to the elementary school building committee. Today, we're considering for approval an additional list of appointments of elected officials to that committee, those of the two counselors, um, one from the finance committee and one generalist, um, and a school committee member. The town council voted on the two counselors recommended for appointment, counselors Kathy Shane as the member of the finance committee and Steve Schreiber. Uh, and the school committee recommended one member, committee <coughs> member Ben Harrington. Um, so the council needs to act today because the MSBA deadline is June 30th or tomorrow. Um, so uh, the town manager is here and if he would like to add something, uh, that would be great. This is the memo that we see here, his memo with his recommendations. Thank you, Darcy. So this is pretty straightforward. There are two members uh, from the town council and one member from the school committee, both of those bodies selected their members. And I am as the sort of appointing authority, as the appointing authority, am forwarding those to you for your consideration. Great. Um, so do we have any questions for the town manager? Let me look at, see if we have hands here. Um, I do, I don't have questions about the memo, but I do have questions about um, the, um, the resident applicants and the timeline. So I just want going to ask that now. Mm -hmm. um, we had said that we would get those um, appointments, the resident recommendations by our meeting on August 6th, but now we've added a meeting on July 23rd. So I'm just wondering if you think that it's possible to get the um, recommendations by July 23rd. Um, I can't guarantee, no, I don't think so. Just with the holiday and the interviews that we have to conduct in everyone's schedule, um, I think August 1st, August, whatever date it is, is still the, the target date. And there won't be a meeting until the full the committee is fully constituted. Okay, that was another question I had, and that's so that's that's a good thing. Um, were there any changes in the charge at all? No. 
Okay, any other questions? Oh, um, okay, raise your hand. Dorothy, are yeah. you raising your hand? Yes. Yeah. I did want to ask Paul why he specifically wanted to exclude parents with experience in the schools. I don't exclude anybody um, at all. Um, uh, there's a preference if you have younger children, uh, so you do have children in the schools, but I'm not excluding anybody and, there's, and it's just a preference, not a requirement. Okay. So yeah, we went through that pretty thoroughly at the last meeting and that's, you know, that's in the report. Um, I didn't see it change, any change though in the, Somewhere I saw the, the, the request from members again in one of the pieces of paper and I didn't see any change. So I guess we discussed it, but I, but it, it didn't have any impact as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? Um, all right. If no other questions, uh, I move to recommend that the town council approve the town manager's recommendation to appoint the following persons to the elementary school building committee. Um, for terms that last the length of the MSBA process. Kathy Shane, town councilor, who is a member of the finance committee. Steve Schreiber, town councilor, and Ben Harrington, school committee member. Um, all those are all those in favor? We need a second. Oh. I second. <laughs> a second. All right. I second. George is seconding. All those in favor? You need a roll call vote. Uh, yes, Alyssa. Yes. And um, myself, yes. Dorothy? Yes. George? Yes. Evan? Yes. Slight, slightly out of order there. Um, okay, so that's unanimous and that will be reported for the town, to the town council tonight. Uh, they already got the report of the first batch, so they'll get a report of this. Um, Okay, so um, moving on to the um, options memo, the options for town council review of long-term permanent public way requests. Um, that is a memo that was put forward by the council president and Dave Zomek, the assistant town manager and um, uh, at the June 15th meeting of the town council, putting forward a couple of options regarding how the town council should deal consistently with long-term permanent requests regarding the public way. Um, uh, under the charter, the town council has authority over such uses as opposed to the town manager and the town services committee has in its charge review of such requests. Um, so I asked Lynn that council president is with us today. She's producing the meeting and participating in this part of the meeting. And, um, and I asked her to, um, to present and keep in mind generally the, the kind of factors that we wanted to look at in our preliminary presentation. Um, so Lynn, would you like to do so? Sure. Um, so this was brought to uh, my attention by Dave Zomack, uh, and Paul was at, also there at the meeting, so Paul may want to speak to it. Um, what has happened is we've just become inconsistent with how we deal with long-term use of public way. Sometimes we've done um, a presentation at the council and then we've referred other times we've done a presentation at the council and then we've adopted and other and I don't know if we've ever done just a direct referral so since TSO is the body that has the responsibility to deal with long-term use of the public way in addition to the council therefore it was appropriate that this memo then be referred to TSO so let me just say, I don't think there's a magic answer here. And I, I just want to be very clear. And tonight we're going to have two examples 
well, one example already, you know, we have two examples tonight um, on the council meeting. But the options that are laid out here, one is that if there's automatic referral, TSO immediately receives it, um, or it's done through a consent agenda, which by the way, would then reserve the option that it isn't referred. And then the other option is that everything is basically heard at the council and we vote to suspend rules and we do the kinds of things we've done. So let me just review a couple things. And the reason Dave brought this up is because it, the more, the more we don't have your path, the more we cost petitioners money. Because so for example, they may come to the town council meeting, not knowing if it's going to be referred or not. And they may have lined up their attorneys and their developer or whoever else. Mm -hmm. That costs the money. And then if we decide to refer, they have to line those same people up again, because now they're going to give a presentation to TSO. And it's not out of the question that if TSO once they've ruled or made a recommendation, when it comes back to the council, it could be such a complicated situation that in fact, they have to bring their developer, their attorneys, et cetera, yet again. And I will just tell you from my, a person, not a personal experience, but an experience of a, um, a colleague, a personal friend, if you will, um, it cost a lot of money for her to get for building built because between everything the council now needs to do and the planning board needs to do and if there's zoning situations it starts stacking up the amount of additional assistance that um, you know the petitioner and I might add our staff have to put in so I'm not clear that there is pardon the double use of the word I'm not sure there is a clear uh, path here so for example, tonight, we have coming before us the group from um, Crocker Farm who wants to add three more little libraries, okay? And we have on the agenda tonight that we would actually suspend the rules and go ahead and vote. You know, this is a group of, a, it's a teacher, Kathleen Perkins, and then it's her students and their parents. And, you know, it's one of those times when the council gets to do something that feels a lot more positive than some of the other things we get to do. We also tonight have a hearing, which we have to have anyway, um, but it's on the issue of One University Drive. One University Drive came to us. We actually did it at a council meeting. And the only thing that was left to do is the hearing that we have tonight, which would not, which is public way, but it's public way because it's parking. Uh, and then the other example that was recently done was the one for Southeast Street. And because in the process of looking at that, people said, well, you know, um, Design Review Board had some questions, then there was a referral to TSO. So you can see the examples. Now, so again, there is no clear solution. And um, the sometimes, these things need to be expedited because we're holding somebody up in terms of getting stuff done and the season construction is narrowing or something like that. Um, so there's just any number of elements that come into here. And I mean, there, another option, frankly, is you could leave it to, um, you know, the president of the council, whoever that is, to make their own judgment as to whether or not to bring it forward as a full council agenda item or to do an automatic refer, not an automatic, or to put it on consent for referral. Um, again, I think that's enough said and we should go on and hear what you all have to think about this. Do we have discussion? Wait a minute, let's let me, uh, Alyssa. Yes, you have raised hands. I think part of the reason this is so complicated is because the complex system of subcommittees that we have that we don't call subcommittees. 
when the select board did these requests for the public way, it was more straightforward. We still had to deal with all the maneuvering around, did we need a hearing or didn't we need a hearing? How much notice it has to be in the newspaper, yada, yada, yada. So that always took time and we often found ourselves running behind associated with that. But as soon as you add in another body, as Lynn points out, not only is it costly to the applicant, but it's costly to all the staff trying to manage this. So even if town council believes it has a certain set of meetings, then TSO has to have a certain set of meetings, et cetera. So there's some predictability for people. I, I, I agree with Lynn that there is just, there really literally is no one solution to this. I think it's going to end up being something that we're going to have to try structuring a couple of things around based on the kinds of things like the example she gave tonight. Well, given the, that set of circumstances, maybe it goes down this directional path. Given that set of circumstances, it goes down this directional path. I am totally opposed to the idea of it putting the president of the, in the position of deciding which action town council is going to take. What I am most in favor of is something that we are not particularly good at as a town that I think we need to get better at for all the reasons that were cited, which is that we know these things are coming months before they have to be acted on. Somebody in town knows that because they've been dealing with applicants. Now, they're not somebody who's necessarily on the town council, but there's somebody in town, so their staff is aware that something's going to be happening. So given that, there needs to be more effort placed toward, I believe, getting this on the town council agenda as there's a thing gonna happen. In six months, so somebody wants to do this. In three months, somebody wants to do this. In two months, the farmer's market's gonna start up. What do we wanna do? because I think it is appropriate to bring it to the town council, not for, for example, like tonight's hearing, for all those folks to have to come and bring the, all their paid staff, their paid staff to come and talk about it, but simply a presentation by the president and the town manager or whatever staff he designates, if it's Dave or if it's somebody from planning or whoever, to say, this is what's happening. There's a project. It's at this point in the ZBA process. It's eventually going to need action from you. What do you think? Do you think you want them to come? Do you, the town council, think you want them to do this purely at a, at a council? Does it need a hearing? Oh, well then should we have the hearing right away or should there be some preliminary work by the TSO? I think if we had that most basic introductory, this is like pre before preliminary in our later discussion today, if we had a basic introduction to the topic, which in fact the president it should be getting, not saying they always do, but should be getting from staff at agenda setting meetings, right? This is something that's gonna be coming down the line. When it feels ready to daylight this, right? Cause it's not gonna put any applicant in an awkward position to say, okay, here's where we're at. So given what we know, there's gonna be a roundabout. Okay, that sounds pretty complicated. Are we gonna wanna hear that as an entire town council or do we wanna refer it to TSO right away? I think if we have that initial conversation that's not an hour long conversation that has no presentation by the applicants themselves, we'll be in a much better position of deciding then which part of the decision tree we need to go down. But by missing that step, it always feels like we're trying to catch up later and people feel like they're getting pushed one area or another. And finally, I just wanna say, I really dislike the idea of having applicants come to TSO instead of coming to the full town council. TSO is not as accessible to the public as full town council meetings are, pandemic or no pandemic. People expect these things to be managed at the town council. So I think things should only be referred to TSO when they're going to have particular complexity. And that's why, for example, tonight, we're having this hearing and everything's taking place at the full town council meeting because we had a discussion at the council meeting and we said, you know what? TSO isn't gonna be a value add to this. This is something the full town council needs to do. Other things we might want TSO to go off and work on for a couple meetings worth of stuff and then come back. But without that very introductory presentation, something's coming down the line. I think we can't make a decision as to where we belong on the decision tree. Um, before we move on, I just want to say that Dave Zomack is here and I promoted him to panelists, so he's in the room. And um, Evan has his hand up. Evan? Yeah, so I, uh, I agree a lot with what Alyssa said, um, including that we should call them subcommittees, but that's a whole different thing. Um, but I, I guess I just want to reinforce a, a couple points. So one, um, 
looking at the document that Lynn has shared on the screen, uh, definitely completely opposed to automatic referral and, and modifying our rules to do such. I think one of the complexities of this beyond all of the ones that Lynn and Alyssa uh, listed out is how different some of these requests are from each other um, and how some of them are pretty significant and others are pretty minor. And so it doesn't make sense to me to refer every public ways request to this ESO because some of them don't really require any review. Um, some of them, we, such as the public free libraries that are put up, we don't need to go through a, a review process for some of these things, or in my opinion. Um, and, that, and that takes our time up, it takes other people's time up. Um, what I support is what Alyssa said, which is first step is an introductory presentation at the full town council level by staff um, that doesn't require um, the applicants to come in. They can if they want, but, but as Lynn said, there's expense um, associated with that. Um, and then the town council can have a discussion about what they want to do with it um, regarding referral. Because one of the things that I think we're getting better at as a council, and I'm glad about that, is adding some specificity to our referrals, not just referring for the sake of referral but saying here is what we expect the committee to give back to us. And so as Lynn said, with the Southeast street, they said, we're pretty much good with this, but we would like TSO to just look at these design review board recommendations. Whereas with uh, South Univer uh, University South, the council sort of felt like we have all the information. We don't, we don't really need anything else. And so there was no reason for it to come to us. Um, and so I think that's the best approach to uh, start with a introductory presentation from the staff who have been working with the applicants. If the applicants want to send people, by all means, but not required. And then the council can say, do we want this to go to referral? Are we just good with this? Can we just vote this at the next meeting or even suspend the rules? Um, or do we actually want to bring the applicants into a full town council meeting and get a more thorough presentation from it? Um, but I think that's the best approach, starting with that introductory. Um, I want to just, before you go on to the next, and I can't raise my hand because I'm too busy. Oh, go ahead, Lynn. That, um, Alyssa's absolutely right. We know these things are coming. I knew University Drive was coming because Paul would mention it in a meeting, you know, about maybe three months ago. David is in those meetings. Um, we knew that the Southeast Street was coming. Uh, I knew that the Little Libraries was coming. So I, I really like this fact, the idea of, you know, heads up, this is coming. And when we know that it's almost ready, saying heads up, it's coming. Now what do you want to do with it? And asking the council. Um, George has his hand up. George. I like what I'm hearing, but I'm, I'm a little concerned about this introductory presentation and how it's actually going to save us any time. One of the things we're struggling with as a council is the enormous amount of time that we spend doing things that should be done uh, somewhere else. Um, so I guess it's just a practical question, doesn't have an easy answer. Um, Lynn gives examples of things that <clears throat> she knew about, you know, well down the road, but it's still a question when, you know, what would have happened differently? If we'd heard about uh, one of these projects uh, two months ago, um, would we would the presenters be able to give us enough detail? I mean, it just I think it's just uh, at some point something's ready to be presented, um, and an you know pre presentation or a, you know heads up is nice, but part of me thinks that's the sort of thing that you you give to a council president as she's trying to figure out the agenda. Um, but to have the council sit there and have somebody give kind of a pre pre preview, um, I'm just struggling with how this is actually going to uh, uh, help us a with the fact that we spend six hours or five hours at meetings, and b actually advance the uh, the larger purpose, which is here, so that um, the applicants petitioners know the process. So what we're going to talk about later today is hopefully a process that everyone can look at and they can say, okay, those are the steps. That's the process. So here it sounds like Alyssa and Evan are saying we should have some kind of process step, which is, you know, like a heads up to the council 
so the council can, I don't know, <laughs> I guess, right? And, and we'll, yeah, so I'm, I'm struggling with this to see how it's actually going to play out. And if we look at previous examples, maybe somebody can take an example and, and show me how if this idea of a pre-presentation had been in place, this would have solved the problem of having applicants feel like they have to go to different bodies and how it also would make the life of the council a bit easier. I think one of the roles of TSO is to take on some of the workloads so that then we go back to them and tell them, okay, this is what's been done. But it sounds like the council still wants to have its fingers in, in the pie all the way along. So um, I'm interested in hearing from Dave, um, since you were one of the authors of this or the, the primary moving party. Um, just m more about your impetus behind this. Are you there, Dave? I am here. I'm not sure I'm the, 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 the mover behind this per se. I think a lot of things related to public way touch or, or my staff or I come in contact with and work with applicants on public way, whether it's, you know, the examples you have been citing, Southeast Street, um, Mr. McChee or Mr. Roberts over on U Drive South. So it, it might be Rob Mora and his staff or Chris Brestrup and the planning staff uh, or myself working with applicants. I, I just, I'm sorry, I was a few minutes late to this conversation, but um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a, there's kind of a, it's made me think about, you know, kind of consistency of process and, and all the things you're talking about is, you know, what are, what are you looking for uh, in these early presentations and, and when is it, a, when does it come to the full council or, or TSO and, and the role of TSO? I'm very conscious of, um, of cost and time. Time is money for these applicants. So we've heard time and time again that uh, our process in Amherst is cumbersome. Uh, we're anti-business. I, I don't like that, that uh, framing at all. I, I don't agree with it. But um, time and consistency. Applicants need to know what is the process so they can plan, so they can back out the time it takes to move a project through. So I think consistency is really important. I think uh, we need to recognize that every time a consultant, an engineer, or a, um, or a lawyer, or the applicant himself or herself comes to the, to the board or a committee, it, it is money that they, they need to spend. So I think staff would, will be fine uh, and, and is comfortable coming to you with presentations, um, and, but we want, because we're the liaison to the applicant, we wanna be presenting a consistent, um, a consistent process to them. Um, you know, on U Drive South, we've been working very closely with Barry Roberts and his team for quite a while, and they've worked through conservation, the Zoning Board of Appeals, the Planning Department, et cetera. So a number of staff have touched that project, and we feel very comfortable. DPW was right at the table uh, the entire way, so we feel very comfortable with that project. So I'm not sure if that's helpful or not. Um, Again, I'd like to speak, but I can't raise my hand. Go ahead, Lynn. Um, I, Dave and Paul, I think I, my observation is that some people come forward and they're just better prepared all the way around. They're more experienced and we have experience with them. And so we know what to expect and because they've worked with the town in the past they know what to expect maybe not which meeting it's going to go to but at least they know that the town has certain standards so that's one observation a second observation is um if if we go back to the idea that Alyssa suggested and that is the idea that this is brought up to the council, either by the town manager or by the president. And at the time it's brought up, it, you know, we can state this project is coming forward. It is going to um, have 
X, Y, and Z review by the time it comes to you. And, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, for, I'll just take the, the book thing. They've worked very closely with DPW. They know exactly where the library, little libraries can be in the public way so that it does not prohibit snow plows. And that, you know, so they've, the teacher has done all of that work with Guilford and his staff. So I'm increasingly liking this idea of a preview to the council and getting a sense from the council, but also a sense from the staff of whether they see issues in advance that they know the council is sensitive to. And then based on that, deciding how, what the route would be. Paul has his hand up. Oh. So I, I think it's really important for the council to have a consistent approach to how they handle this. Um, a lot of times people will take a small thing that they need in a public way and hook that into a larger concern about a major project. And that certainly was, is within the realm of um, how someone can make, you know, can argue their point during this. But it, I think that if it's focused on what is in your um, terrain, you're talking about the public way request versus the conservation request versus the planning board's request. It's, but those things ultimately wind up uh, on your plate. So I think as long as we're able to create uh, treat everyone consistently so that um, whoever's asking for it um, is aware of how the process will wor work out. I think that's the fair thing to do. Um, thank you, Paul. Um, George? I guess I just want to reemphasize the idea of it's, this is a fairly narrow focus, this public way issue, right? Um, and yet sometimes it does seem like it gets uh, expanded by some of my colleagues. Um, the public ways issue is a fairly focused issue, very specific, um, and we need to honor that. Um, and again, I wonder why a lot of this could not be done uh, by TSO. It sounds like my colleagues want most of this to be done in full council, with full council input, um, both with the pre-preview and then the presentation, the whole line yards, and TSO really doesn't have much a role to play except when it gets complicated. Um, and it seems these public ways requests are fairly focused and fairly narrow. Um, and so I'm, I guess I'm still struggling to see, um, well, I, I like to hear from my colleagues why they feel that TSO really doesn't have much a role to play or it only has a role to play when things get complicated. Um, part of our charge is public ways. It would seem a natural place for these things to come and then we send back to the council our recommendation. But it sounds like, and maybe that's just the way we're gonna go, um, this all has to be in front of the council. And as we've seen, that often leads to discussions that, that drift far away from what actually is at issue in terms of the public way request. Um, yes, you're so saying, I just have a quick question for George. You're saying that that happens in the council or at TSO? I've seen it happen in both places. Yes. Um, uh, Dave. Yeah, two quick things. One is, you know, our goal as staff is always, whether we're preparing for a, a, a committee meeting like TSO or, or the full council, our goal is and should always be uh, to present, you know, a full picture of, of the project or the request. I did want to say one thing about the pre, uh, again, I came into this discussion late this morning, but a pre-presentation. One of the things we need to think about is um, what is the role of staff relative to the applicant and what is the applicant's role in presenting a project to you uh, regarding the public way? And there may be times where, uh, and I think there are times where, um, where staff may not agree with the entirety of the proposal. And so um, we need to have an opportunity for staff to express that to you as TSO or to the full, uh, the full uh, council. Um, but I wanna make sure if, if staff did the pre-proposal, um, does that give an applicant an opportunity, a fair opportunity to present his or her 
proposal to you. Staff is going to say, here's the proposal. We, we like this portion, but we're not in favor of that. It, I just want to make sure the applicant has a has that opportunity because staff, you know, we don't always agree with what applicants uh, want from the town in, in, in the form of, you know, public way requests. So I'll just not to complicate things, but that is an important piece. Thank you, Dave. Um, Alyssa? So I, um, having been somewhat shifted now from George's question to responding to what Dave's saying as well as what George was saying. So yes, staff has to be willing to say, this is the proposal, these are the steps they've been through so far, this requires a hearing, this doesn't require a hearing. It's gone through CONCOM, it will go through CONCOM. We have, we staff have expressed to the applicant our concerns about X, Y, Z. This is still a preliminary presentation. They are going to get their full opportunity to explain all of the aspects of their proposal to CONCOM, whoever else, and eventually to you. Do you want that to be explained, town council, to you at a full town council meeting, or do you want to shift this over to TSO? And I feel every confidence in having our staff do that. What I don't feel confident about is I don't feel confident about having that take place at the TSO level instead of at the town council level. The entire town council does not trust each other, does not trust the process, does not know what their real job is when it comes to dividing up their opinion on the project versus their opinion on the public way, as has been made clear by speakers today and at TSO and at full town council in the past. So until we develop a more trusting relationship with who does what in this process and for the public to see that the full town council is engaged in deciding whether or not it's up to TSO to make some recommendations or if it's something the full town council is just like, we can just move forward with this. This little library thing's going to be great. Why would we shift that off to TSO? Why would we have had those kids come to TSO just because that's our process? And so the practical aspect of accessibility is still true. TSO meetings are not as accessible as full town council meetings to anyone, so it looks more secretive to people when it's not. And it's an optics issue. And the other part is TSO doesn't know anything about the public way. We don't have knowledge that the other members of the town council don't have. We are not yet specialists in this. Once we have to wrestle with more complex issues because the town council has quite reasonably referred them over to us and said, man, this is complicated. You're gonna need to have some more people talk about this. Then that's totally where TSO is gonna develop its strength and ability to dig into those issues. At this point, TSO members don't know any more about U Drive than the full town council does. Therefore, it only makes sense for the full town council to do it because the full town council isn't gonna rightfully so, assume TSO had any idea what they were talking about any more so than any other five of the town councilors. So I want us to develop the skills to really have a value add and we'll do that with the complex issues, but I don't want everything to be sent directly to us first because we want to hear just like those specific referrals Evan mentioned, we want to hear from town council, what is it we want to know? What is it that staff hasn't yet addressed or that staff's concerned about that we might want to talk about more? What are those things? And that's the kind of meet that TSO can do on behalf of the town council and then report back. Thank you. Dorothy. Um, so I'm very confused here. Um, in the different documents we have of the process we do, we talk about a sponsor. And that's the person who wants to do something, usually a builder or a developer. Then Dave just talked about getting presentations from staff and I thought, well, that's who I want to hear from. I want to hear from people uh, from the town who've looked at this, examined it, and put it in terms of town policies and, have, and may bring up um, some support in some areas and some drawbacks. But that's, we, when we, all these different steps of process, that's not how things started. We, all these process papers, I've got three of them here, start off saying we're going to have the sponsor and then TSO is going to ask all the questions. So, um, I, I can see that there's a lot of confusion here. 
one of the advantages of, of having TSO be part of it near the beginning, according at least to some of these documents, was that it was going to be a focused examination of what information do we need. Not having it come just randomly from different counselors at a general town council meeting, but some kind of focus on it. Well, we're going to need to have all of this stuff. Um, I could see that as having a role. Uh, I certainly do agree with Alyssa, though, that big decisions should be and presentations where you're calling people in from the outside and their staff. Um, I think that, that probably it is inappropriate for TSO to do that and they really do belong at the town council. So question is, if it starts at the town council, does it start with a staff presentation? Does it start with a sponsor coming in? Um, we hadn't even talked about that. That step isn't in many of our documents here. Um, if there's a presentation, that's made not by the sponsor, but by the staff. I could see it going to TSO to come up with a bunch of questions and procedures and to focus on it, and then to bring it back to town council. And then the developer or the person, the petitioner, the sponsor comes in with their staff. That could be reasonable to me, but that, I don't think that's a plan that we've been presented with. I'd like to have people argue with me. <laughs> Are there any other comments? I would say that I agree with those who have said that there should not be an automatic referral because that doesn't make sense for all items. Um, and I am not wedded to one way or the other. Um, I do think that there should not be a pre-pre-presentation a pre by staff before the applicant even has the opportunity to make his or her application or case because that's the first thing that we should hear and then then hear feedback from staff um, uh, in my opinion i'm not sure also what we should do with this today um paul i was going to throw an idea out there um maybe one way to approach this is to have staff make a like once every two months, whatever it is, a, presenta a presentation to the full council. Typically, this is something that we would have gone through the, you know, the chair or the president with, but if the, the council feels like we want to make the decision about where this lands, uh, staff could make a, a summary presentation of here are three things that are coming that we anticipate coming forward in the next two months, three months, whatever it is. And you can start to divide them out saying this one clearly needs to go to TSO. This one clearly doesn't need to go to TSO. This one, you know, president, you decide where it should go. But um, if we could do a, if, if you want to carve time out on your agenda, it wouldn't be a full blown presentation. We might come in and say something like um, on Southeast Street, the, the proposal is to take a piece of the public way for this purpose, you know, five minutes on that, um, five minutes on you drive saying, here's what we're looking at um, for that. And you can say, this one's a no-brainer. We can move forward. This one needs more complexity. Um, that, and some things will not fit into that because they'll come before we know it or something like that. But that could be one way to approach it. Thank you. Other comments? Um, Alyssa? I like that idea of doing something regularly scheduled so we could all be planning on it, right? And and not do it for, you know, with Paul being stuck doing it at 1050 at night as part of his town manager's report, but it being something that we, we predictably were going to be talking about because the public would really like that too, right? They're often after us, like, where are we on such and such? I heard a thing about such and such. And so to be able to kind of bring them along, I think is incredibly helpful as well. The other thing I do want to just push back on a little bit is that there there is no such thing as hearing from the applicants first. That's just a mythical thing. It's not a mythical thing when it comes to bylaws or proclamations or some other kind of measure. It is a mythical thing when it comes to the public way. There is no such thing as an applicant getting to present to a completely clean audience their opinion as to what should happen to the public way. There has been a process for these folks to do something before they ever get to the town council, before the town council makes a decision on the public way. We absolutely have to have, in order to do our jobs as a town council, 
framing from town staff as to what policies we already have, what boards they've already been to, is this a mass general law issue, is this a hearing issue? The applicant on a public way thing is not, now, as Lynn says, some are more skilled than others, they could run through chapter and verse and tell you that, but the applicant is not going to come to us out of the clear blue saying, I need this public way adjusted in front of this project. They are going to have been through a process. So the idea that they get to present first and then we hear from staff, that doesn't even make any sense to me because we're going to have memos if we're doing our jobs. We're going to have memos that tell us what the context is for this, where this has been, where it's going and what the decision points are. So this is not like somebody trying to bring us a bylaw idea fresh off the street that a town councilor has to sponsor. This is another variation of the several documents we have in our packet. The public way, as Dorothy said, this public way conversation is currently taking place separately from that discussion, but it needs to be folded into that discussion and sponsors are not the same when it's a developer of a project that's already been through several steps with the town mm -hmm. versus somebody coming to us with a bylaw. So it's just yet another complexity as to where we are in this decision tree. But it's not ever going to be true that a public way proposal is going to come out of whole cloth from an applicant to the town council. They are going to have talked about it with staff first and staff should provide us the context of, oh, that's actually not even the public way. That's not your problem. We need to actually hear from staff framing every one of these issues. So I, I do like this idea of, if not yet a preliminary presentation on individual projects per se, at least this summary idea that Paul just came up with that um, talks about upcoming things, which again, it's very much like the agenda setting sort of conversations and figuring out what are the easy ones to figure out and then which ones actually need five minutes or 10 minutes or a TSO discussion. Okay, thank you. Um, George. So I'm envisioning this um, two month, every bi-monthly, whatever it is, presentation by staff, which, you know, I would welcome too, in front of the 13 of us. Say three or four things are put out there with, uh, that's going to take some time. And you're going to tell me that the 13 of us are just going to sit there and just nod and then not say anything. And secondly, if we do start saying things, which we will, um, then what happens? Do we take a vote on each one as to where it's going to go and what's going to happen? You're getting 13 people, it sounds like, to try and agree on what the agenda, on agenda setting. Um, I guess you could argue that that conversation, however long it will go on, and I'm sure it will go on for a long time, um, will give the council president some idea of how people are thinking and feeling. But is that the purpose? I mean, is that what we really want to spend our council time on? Um, it seems in a more rational world, this is the sort of agenda setting that happens at, 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 you know, with the, the council president uh, trying to figure out the, the order of way things need to be dealt with and also subcommittees, if that's what you want to call them. Um, but it sounds like we're going to do this as we've been doing it all along. All 13 of us are going to sit there. We'll get excellent staff presentations. We, they're very good. Um, it'll be interesting. Uh, they'll be concise, but there'll be two, three, four of them, uh, right? Uh, maybe. And we're just going to, nothing's, nobody's going to say anything. And we're not going to discuss, we're not going to vote, we're not going to decide. So what's the point? So if we are going to do the, the, the discussion and voting, that's what, half hour, an hour? Uh, it just seems, this is a, I don't know. I just, to me, it seems like a terrible waste of our time. We're trying to figure out ways to get things done at another level. And once again, we're pushing it up to the highest level. Um, and we're going to spend another hour at a, at a meeting where we already have not enough time trying to figure out the agenda. Thank you. Evan. So this is, of course, more complicated than I think I originally had thought it was hearing Alyssa, hearing George and hearing Dave. Um, but one thing I also just wanted to put out there um, is that, in my opinion, um, there's been talk about when applicants come in, the cost associated with that. But I think one of the benefits of having that introductory conversation about this, even if it could be time consuming, is it helps us determine whether we actually need to hear from applicants. And if the concern of staff, which is a concern I'm hearing, is the time and expense of applicants. Um, when I'm thinking about the Southeast Street project, we actually never brought um, the applicant in to either TSO or the council. 
there's a feeling that we didn't need to hear from the applicants. We could accomplish that without hearing from the applicants. Um, with University of Drive South, our initial presentation was from Chris, if I remember correctly, it was from staff. Um, Mr. Brady was at the meeting as an attendee, but we didn't call on him. Now, at our last meeting, we heard an extensive presentation from, from Mr. Reedy, um, which, uh, while I appreciate, I, I thought was actually unnecessary. I think that was a waste of time because he sort of just repeated a lot of things we already knew and showed us pictures we had already looked at. And so I appreciated his time, but I don't think it was actually time well spent. And that was a presentation where after Chris had finished presenting it, the council said, eh, we're good on this. We don't really have further questions. We don't need it to go to TSO. So um, let's just move forward. And of course, it got a little complicated having to have a public hearing. But I, I do think the benefit of that, that first presentation and having staff speak first is it allows us to determine whether we feel we actually even need the applicants to come in. And I think there are circumstances where we, we don't. And we saw that with Southeast Street. I think that would have been true um, with U Drive, especially if it didn't have to have a public hearing, which of course it does. Um, but I think having staff as the first presentation does that. Where it gets complicated, which I hadn't thought of, so I'm really glad he said it, was what Dave said about when staff and applicants have some disagreements. But that's something where staff could say in that introductory presentation, we're not comfortable with all of this. And maybe in that situation, we say, well, okay, in this case, we actually would like to hear from the applicants because there is some conflict. And, and at the end of the day, as the keepers of the public way, we're the ultimate arbiter. So um, I am hoping that we can figure out a way to wrap this segment up. Um, I, I am hearing that there's one thing that we agree, that it appears that we have consensus on is that we agree that there shouldn't be an automatic referral to TSO. Um, but as, what, do you have thoughts, Lynn, on how to handle this? Yeah. Um I think, first of all, you've had a really good discussion about this, and I appreciate that. Uh, and um, I like both the idea of not an automatic. I also really like the idea of every two months or so having a part of our presentation period on our agenda, a staff presentation on what's coming up and getting a sense from that. And that, I think, um, with all of that, what I'd like to do is take that and come back with additional ideas. And then I think what ultimately PSO needs to do is, in fact, say, we're coming back to the council with these additional thoughts on how to handle this. So I think we've done as much as we can do today on this discussion. Okay, thank you. Um, all right, we're going to move on to the review process. Um, I am going to share the document. I'm going to stop sharing. Okay. There you go. Um, let's see if I can do this. Oops, wait. Let me know if you have trouble because I, I have it ready to queue up. Okay. Uh, I think this is it. Do we see it? Do you see the um, discussion framework? We see the discussion framework TSO review process. Okay. Um, and, and it says draft two. And you might uh, enlarge it if you can. Okay. Is that good? Yes. Um, okay, so um, last week uh, we started looking at a draft review <coughs> uh, that was based on one referred to us by the Community Resource Committee. Um, there are actually three large issues, areas that we'll eventually look at that have to do with TSO process. Um, one is the steps in our review process from the referral of a measure to the vote and the report back to the council. One is our stakeholder rubric that can be used as a guide to see whether we need input from the community with regard to the impacts, benefits, and drawbacks of a proposed measure. 
um, and as factors to consider during deliberation. And lastly, we hope to be looking at our outreach function and process, which is part of our charge. Today, we're just going to be looking at the, the review process. And what I suggest is that we just start on, on the preamble in number one um, and see how far we get. Um, and I would like to, if possible, by somewhere around 11, we'll see how it goes. I thought we were gonna get started on this a little bit earlier. Um, I would like to see, since we seem to have from our input uh, much consensus on what the criteria are um, for the information that we need on a preliminary presentation, that I would like to um, do a practice preliminary presentation of the surveillance technology bylaw uh, if we can get to it today. And that is partly because um, there is uh, the there is a piece of it, the facial recognition technology, that is very relevant now to the discussions that we're having with um, the police department. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, we would like to be able to move that forward if possible. So um, let, why don't we take a look at this? Um, what happened over the period of the week is that Alyssa uh, made some suggestions about language in the, the um, step one especially. Uh, and George uh, put together some suggestions and Evan, Evan joined him in those. So I incorporated as much as I could um, into this document. So it includes the format that that um, uh, George and Evan submitted, and a fair amount of the language from both their proposal and Alyssa's. So um, why don't we just start going through it and see how far we can get? Um, uh, and uh, I have a hard copy of Evan and George's in front of me. So um, hopefully we can figure out how to do this. Um, and I don't have a screen that tells me if anybody's asking for, let's see, see if I can, I, got, I have to make sure that I know who's raising their hand. But I don't. Lynn, can you just tell me if somebody's raising their hand? Because I don't seem. I know they're not now, but if someone, if we go through, because I do not appear to be able to see. I will do that. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so let's start right in with. Um, um, I think the the uh, the title and the the. Uh, heading seem fine to me. Anybody have any problems with those? They end up being a different draft. Um, and the preamble, um, this was this was uh, uh, offered by George and Evan. The preamble. Any. Any thoughts about that, or do we have consensus on that? It basically is is uh, um, directly quoting our charge on uh, how we do our review. Mm -hmm. uh, I do have. I'd like to say something if I could. Go ahead, George. I just want to point out what's probably obvious to everyone that this is very focused. It does not address um, town manager appointments and does not address outreach. So it's it's a piece of our charge, um, this preamble and this document. 
is focused on um, trying to focus on very specific things. So I assume everyone's comfortable with that. Everyone's okay with that. This is not a process document for everything we do. It's we're trying to create, at least my understanding was a process document for dealing with the kinds of public ways requests, um, potential town policy issues and bylaws. Um, so just pointing that out. And that's that we cover in a in a foot footnote below, right? Um, that the oh, the, there's a footnote that pertains to, or maybe the footnote is left out. Uh, was that footnote in the preamble? Referring to the footnotes that are at the bottom, the the definition of a measure, et cetera. Um, I guess I guess in the process of redrafting this, I left out the footnote, so uh, we need to put that back in. And I can't remember where where it uh, what it referred back to. It was in the first. Preamble. Was it in the preamble? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so we'll put that back in there. But and I think that um, I actually added some words to the footnote um because it said um measure refers if you a, a measure can you see it on your screen the footnote mm -hmm. yeah um it says for, per, for the purposes of this document measure refers to bylaws public way requests and town council policies i added plans or goals um just because I wasn't sure that policies included plans and goals. Um, Alyssa has her hand up. Alyssa? Thank you. So we're gonna struggle throughout this document with the fact that it's trying to be one thing that solves them all. It says that it includes public way requests. As it's written, it doesn't include public way requests. And so um, I appreciate what George said, but this doesn't cover everything and we should have a policy as, or a process of our own about how we're doing town manager appointments and about how we're doing public way requests and in fact the public way request should be folded in here the title's just a little miss the title's um aspirational at this point because we cannot we cannot pretend that all these words apply to all these things i think that one thing that will probably help us maybe in part of the preamble at some point can be added in as we backfill some of this is to say this is where things come from to TSO because this does not cover where this doesn't even cover the fact that a referral's been made to us this doesn't mention that that's where something came from was as a referral as opposed to somebody coming to us directly and so there might be things where people come to us directly. So I'm just saying we may want to add a little bit of a section to explain that. And that can also say for public ways, see this. For appointments, we haven't written that yet. But I don't want it to imply, I, I'm fine with keeping the title. It's just aspirational at this point because this doesn't cover all these possible paths that we have to go down. And that's one of our challenges here, right? Is we have some very different kinds of things we're trying to do and we're trying to wedge them all into one process. So I think we're gonna continue to rub up against that and we just need to consider, we need to plan to add a section about where we're getting things from how things are getting on our work plan whatever but that uh, and so i will try not to express that frustration throughout the meeting but when you said are you okay with the title i'm like well not really because it doesn't actually deal with public ways requests yet but we're working on that as we just did that's kind of why i asked the question okay um so we 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 can uh um other than let's see i guess do we have consensus on the preamble if we uh add the footnote at the bottom here and i hear what you're saying Alyssa. um yes sure um so I am not seeing any of your faces or hands or anything. So I'm assuming we have consensus. 
Well, um, I, I think Alyssa raises a point, I'm sorry to interrupt, but um, about something going in the preamble about where things come from. Yeah. Um, and we don't have that in this document at the moment. I'm not sure we have agreement about that, though maybe it's just a technical thing. We can easily solve it. We're not going to solve it now, I agree. But that does seem to be something, if I understand Alyssa's comment, that's missing from the preamble that needs to get in there somewhere or something, somewhere at the beginning of the document. Right. Something well, like that needs to be put in. And so uh, I don't think uh, we can really, we can't sign off on the preamble, obviously, um, for a number of reasons. Um, and one of them is, it seems, unless Alyssa disagrees, that, that there's something missing here that's important. Well, I think that Alyssa had included in her hers an additional step. And actually, my original had had an, a, a separate step for referral. And that's perfectly fine to have an additional step. I think that I was just trying to, to condense steps. And I wasn't sure that that was necessary. So, but if people want that, that's absolutely fine with me. Uh, so shall we just add referral as the as it was in the original version or st step one and then move the uh, bump the others up? I guess I, for me, it just becomes a question of what um, people want. Um, I, I really don't care where things come from. They just, they get to us, right? However they get to us, they get to us. And the question for me is, what do we do with them? What's our process once we get them? Um, but it does seem to matter to some, and maybe it should matter to me, um, that we have spelled out where they can come from. Um, most of them come by referral. But Alyssa is correct. There could be, something could be initiated from within the committee, or something could come to us from, I don't know, from a citizen, I guess. Um, I personally don't really care about where they come from. Um, at some point, the committee has to decide. I mean, if it's referred to us by the council, um, we have to deal with it, right? I, I assume that's true, right? We can't, the council refers to something, we can't just tell them, eh, we're not interested. Um, we have to deal with that. But if a citizen comes to us or if a committee member says, I'd like to talk about X, Y, I want to do something with X, Y, or Z, then the committee will decide whether they want to do that. They might say, no, we, you know, four of us don't want to do that. Or maybe all of us decide we do want to do it. So I personally don't really feel the need for having something about where things come from. Um, but I, I could be in the minority and that's fine. Um, but if we do want something like that, then we're gonna have to make a decision about it and put it somewhere. Yeah, so, well, it, does, it is referred to in the preamble. I mean, it does say two ways in which things could get to us. Referred by the council or take up matters within our dom domain. So it- Exactly, it's there, right? But is, is that enough? Is that enough? Um, that is enough for me. Um, but it is for me too. <laughs> I hear Alyssa sighing. Yeah, you do. Well, I, I appreciate that, George, and you and I are always going to be in disagreement on these sorts of matters, and, and I just have to live with that. But it's, if we're trying to make it clear to the rest of the council and to the public, as well as to ourselves, what we're actually doing, to just have the broad reference to something that's within our domain doesn't really tell them how to get it actioned upon. And so I really appreciate that Darcy included my wording along the lines of it being in response to the TSO work plan or by request of a TSO member. Because if we, if people don't know how it gets to us, because the work plan, right, would, in, would include all our referrals, or anything else that we've done, then I guess I'm okay with that as long as that, if people feel like that makes it clear where stuff comes from. Because it's, you know, then perhaps that is adequate language to make that clear. Because it's not in the preamble, and so we were arguing about the content of the preamble, which is gonna take a really long time if we do that line by line. But, if the first sentence in step one covers it, then for everybody else, then I'm good with that. Okay, great. Um, does anyone else have their hand raised? I'm, I'm assuming not. Um, okay, so we're moving on to step one preliminary, preliminary presentation of a measure. Um, and this is um, 
this whole section is a combination of um, mostly what Alyssa suggested and with some of, uh, I mean, it was, uh, there was a lot of overlap between what Alyssa, Evan, and George suggested and the original document. So um, mm. uh, let's look at the first paragraph here. Uh, and this is, this is Alyssa's language. So she, she does, she, as she said, she includes the two different ways um, that a measure could get to us. Um, I, I have a question about who the presenter is supposed to be. This says the chair will present. Um, maybe that's what we'll decide. But um, my thought was that it doesn't always have to be the chair. Um, someone could be designated as presenter oh, and that yes. step one will describe what they, the presenter has to do. Um, but this says the chair will present a preliminary presentation. Um, right. Is that what we want? No, we, we want the chair or the chair's designee. In my opinion. Um, so yes, good point, George. Um, uh, anything else on that paragraph? Yes. I think we're just, we're, we're not really working at cross purposes here. We're just not sure which sentence we're on. The first section talks about the chair. The next sentence, which we aren't at yet, modifies the first sentence and talks about the chairs, the chair's designee or committee member. When it says committee member, I don't know what that means. I don't know if that means a TSO committee member or some other committee member. I don't know why there would be somebody other than the chair. I, I don't understand that sentence. But the reason I wrote chair is because chair never means in anyone's world that only the chair can do something. It means it's the chair's responsibility. The chair can always delegate to someone else. The president can always delegate to someone else who's acting as the president in almost everything. I mean, there's the charter provisions about the president will have XYZ forum. But generally speaking, common usage of chair means or somebody the chair assigns it to. If you want to elaborate that that's that on that, that's fine with me, but it never meant, and it will never mean when I write chair, just like the chair does not always have to write the report of the committee to the town council. The chair can assign things out always, but if you want to make that clear here, that's fine. But in that next sentence, which in fact does talk about exactly that, I, we just need to clarify what committee member means because I don't know why there would be a difference between the TSO chair, the TSO chair's designee, or some other TSO member. I don't understand the discrepancy there. I think that's just old language. But to make it clear, George, I never meant, and I will never mean, that the chair means only the chair. Yeah, we can take out the or committee member language that is unnecessary. Um, so, um, uh, can we move on to the numbers below? Well, can we just agree, I'm sorry, can we just agree that I would like, um, I appreciate Alyssa's comment and I will try to remember that in the future, but I would like <coughs> um, the, the phrase or chair's designee uh, included, if, if that's okay. Yes. Um, and I, I'm wondering just for her, if that first clause uh, meets her concern about the preamble, because it seems to me that's a good place for it. In other words, in response to the TSO work plan or by request of a TSO member, um, does that, um, or would you still prefer that that be sort of highlighted somewhere else? Because it's there and that seems to be addressing your concern, but maybe it's not. So two questions. One, are you okay with the insert? It sounds like you're okay with inserting or chairs designee, um, but what about that first clause? Is that uh, addressing your concern or is it still not enough? I thought I said already that it would be that it would address my concern as long as people were comfortable with it being there. If they thought that we didn't need to say it in the preamble and we said it there as just a first step, then I'm fine with it as long as it as long as it made it through this part of the conversation, then I'm fine with it being there. I just wanted to make sure it was someplace and I'm fine with it being in that spot. So thank you, George. Okay, great. Um so um 
and we could we can change everything to chairs designee like that can just be like a common parlance of ours that would be fine right the chair or the chair's designee that's good and we'll take out committee member um so sounds like without seeing the ability to see anyone's hands it sounds like we have consensus on the first two paragraphs there um i have a you have your hand up dorothy yeah um when i look at Alyssa's, i, I know you say you, you took into account her proposal in, in this language but i have to tell you i like it it's not even a full page i find the sentences easy to read and clear what are you talking about uh the thing that says brewer proposal step you know that's on page three of this little printout, okay? And you said that you included that in, in your presentation, but I just find the sentence structure easier to comprehend and is clearer and simpler, and the structure is simpler. I, I, fi I find this is just getting, it's getting too complicated. It's getting so you don't want to ever look at it, you know? Um, so that's just a general comment about style. I, I prefer the simple style. Okay, she, she only dealt with one piece of this. Um, so that might be why it's shorter. Um, but can we go on to one, number one, two, three, and I guess the numbering is off here. It should be one, two, three, four. Um, oh, okay. Um, so we have Identi one, identify the sponsors. Two, identify the purpose of TSO review, uh, why it is within the TSO charge, and then clarify timing issues. Um, and fourthly, inform TSO of background information provided by the sponsor. But let's do one, two, three first. I think that everyone that that contributed anything um, included two, um, and to some extent included three. Although uh, Alyssa got into more detail on on clarifying the timing issues, and Alyssa has her hand up. Alyssa, well, I mean, <laughs> thanks, Dorothy, because I like my wording better too. I think it's much more user friendly and makes it much more likely we are literally ever going to use this again after the first time. Uh, a, a, a statement when and how the measure came to TSO, I find not as useful as wording along the lines in terms of when do we have to take action? Is it related to other actions? Is it a public health or safety emergency? When are they, what need does the measure address? I do like that wording better and obviously Darcy likes her wording better and George and Evan commented on her wording, and that's the fun part about open meeting law, is that we couldn't decide where Evan could, I could say to Evan, well, what if I change this sentence? And he said, yeah, but don't change this sentence. And now we're trying to do that here, and it's just really cumbersome, as we have seen in all of our other committees. So I don't like statements like when and how the measure came to TSO as much as I find it much easier to understand what are we hoping to do? What need will this address? I prefer the question format because I think it helps me process yeah. the information that's provided better. Uh, that is fine with me. I'd be glad to change these into back into questions. I think the content's the same. I think it's just style. To the point. That's fine. Okay. Sounds good. Um, and um are we good with the content of one two and three um you know Alyssa included the question um identify the need um and yeah i like it i at the time thought that you know why would anything be in front of us we have to look at things that are in front of us and we don't get to say that there's not a reason for them to be there, but in fact, we, we probably do want to hear about the need. Um, so I, I, I agree that we, that that would be good to put back in. 
Evan has his hand up and then George. Evan? So first, just a clarification, because obviously the numbering got messed up. When you're saying one through three, you mean one through four, right? Right. No, no, I, I was saying let's just look at one through three to start with. The first three. Yes. The first three. Yeah. Okay, so sure. then I agree with Alyssa that we get rid of one and how the measure came to TSO, but the need part is part of four. Right? It's not a timing issue. It's not a timing issue. That's where I'm getting confused about what, because the numbering's messed up in this, what we're actually talking about. You can add the need for number four. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, the conversation that we're having around the need and the wording of Alyssa's content or underneath that is all in four. So are we talking about that now? Where's Alyssa's? Uh, hers is yeah. Her she, hers is under under four, right? The 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 second point. What need will the proposed measure address? So that yeah, that will be under four. Uh, what <laughs> that will be under what is going to be four here? So I I like Alyssa's language under three. I think I like all of those um, that would go under R four. Just short. They're, they're, they're easier, but I, I do want to, you know, to some extent, inform TSO of background information. This is information that we should already have mm -hmm. from the sponsor. And so I do want to make clear that there are two steps involved in this, and this is getting a little ahead, but it helps us in this part, which is we need to be informed first about what we already have from the sponsors before we can have a conversation of what we still need from the sponsors because that leads into the next step. So I think that Alyssa's summary of proposed measures from the sponsor's point of view lays out very nicely um, what we're looking for. And so we need to be informed of what do we already have of these. Yeah, I would, um, I would disagree that, that, um, Let's look at Alyssa's again. Um, I would uh, disagree that the sponsor, that, that, that it would be a precondition of moving forward that the sponsor have information about um, how the staff feels about the, whatever the initiative, the measure is. I mean, uh, I think that, sorry, go ahead. That's, and I have expressed that before. Um, I, I, I don't. I think that it's, uh, that it's important and that we definitely have to have it and have a plan to have the staff input, but that I don't believe that that's the sponsor. And I don't think that has anything to do with the sponsor's point of view and it, or that it is, um, uh, responsibility of the sponsor, um, but it is a responsibility of the chair and the committee. And it doesn't, it, I don't see really what, how it matters because all we need to do is ask the staff ourselves. So I, I guess um, that is. I, we just, we just have a disagreement here of, of opinion. I, I want the burden of providing the, if, if someone is a sponsor, if someone feels this is important and is going to take the initiative to bring a measure forth to the council, it is on them to bring forth all of the supporting information that is needed. It is not on PSO to play research. And so I think what we need to know and what's part of three, and I think uh, Alyssa laid out really nicely, is what has the sponsor already provided us? Because then we can have a conversation about what information we want and need so that that goes to the sponsor for them to bring. So I don't think that then having that information is a precondition of having this 
preliminary presentation, but it absolutely is a precondition of having the formal presentation. And the benefit of the preliminary presentation is we can see what's already been provided for us, and then we can communicate to the sponsor, here's the information, here's the input that we're looking for when you come before us for a formal presentation. Um, but that's on the sponsor. If they're, gonna, if they're gonna go through the process of bringing forth a measure, they, they have to be willing to back it up. It's not, I don't want any person off the street to say, hey, I wrote this bylaw, and I don't know what staff thinks, and I don't know what best practices are in other communities, but eh, you guys figure it out. We're not gonna do that, right? If they're gonna go through the process of bringing forth a measure, it's on them. What we're here to do is say, okay, thank you for the information you provided, here are the things we still need from you before we can get to a formal presentation. And that's what I see as the purpose of this preliminary presentation. Other comments? I'll have my hand up. Um, or just hand us, I'm sorry. Thank you, it's all right. Um, I'm kind of just jumping in and I apologize, but um, item four is specifically about background information provided by the sponsor. Everyone's agreed with that? That's all the items under four, the new four, <clears throat> have to do with information provided by the sponsor, right? And we're just being informed as to what it is and what might be lacking. Right. And then the next step would be, um, are we satisfied with what we have? Do we need more information from the sponsor? Do we need to do anything as a committee? That's step five, or number five, I, I assume. Is that, is that correct? Yes. Yeah, so it sounds I'm, like, yeah. I'm assuming that's my job or the chair de chair's designee's job is to figure out, okay, what what is the remaining, uh, what are the questions that I've gathered that I need to send to the sponsor? What, what additional, um, the, the questions that I've listed here, A, B, C, D. Uh, but Darcy, that says that you will solicit the committee, right? whoever you or whoever it is, is actually right. in dialogue with the committee. Right. And it's not going home and saying, okay, scratching their head and saying, okay, having heard all this, what do I need to do next? No, the committee's right. responsibility is to tell you or the, or the presenter, this is what we want you to do. Good, Absolutely. you're okay. Good. Yes. I, that's why I wrote it like that. No, exactly, I just wanted to point out that that's what you wrote. Yes. Um, I have a question about need. Um, I, I'm still a little nervous about this. Um, it seems to be uh, potentially drifting into the realm of deliberation. So could somebody just clarify for me how addressing the, why, why this is needed is not actually becoming part of a deliberation as opposed to simply preliminary. Um, preliminary should be just basic facts. So I assume what people are saying is that what's the factual uh, problem or, or whatever that this is addressing. Um, is that what they mean? I, I, in, in other words, one way I think of need is somebody could just say, why is this needed? <laughs> right? Yeah. But that would seem to be addressed under deliberation. But so what does need mean here? Yeah, well, that, that was my initial thought um, when I took it out. Uh, but then on further thought, I wondered whether it should be back in. So um, other, are there other hands up? My hand is up. Dorothy's hand okay. is up. Okay. I think we do have to ask need. We don't want to waste our time on things that, that uh, might be a vanity project. Or you could say that's very interesting, but this is not really relevant to what we're trying to do now. Or we have, it's something that if we had infinite time, we might think was good to pursue, but we do not. So we won't. I mean, we, I think we always have to have a practical uh, judgment as to whether there's a reason to go forward. And often if you ask the question, you may learn something that makes you realize, yes, we have to do this. People don't always put forward the, some of the most important information when they make a presentation. So I see it as necessary for prelimination. I mean, we hear things we think, okay, is thinking deliberation? Well, um, is it only deliberation if you talk or you're sitting with other people? Uh, we're thinking beings. We have to be given information that makes us say, decide this is worth doing and let's go into it or go at least explore it. So you, you think we should include it? I do, yes, I do. Um, 
Okay, so it looks like uh, Alyssa I'm, has her hand up oh. as does George. Okay, Alyssa. Just to clarify in deliberation, sponsors can't deliberate. Only the TSO members are deliberating. So it's not a deliberation as to whether or not we believe it meets a need. Like Dorothy said, it's them telling us, it's them putting right up front why this is a need to meet. That's why it clearly, I thought, clearly said in bold and italics from the sponsor's point of view. It's purely from their point of view. We may have a completely different perspective and we'll, that'll come out in our discussion but they need to tell us why they think this is so important and being very direct about that rather than us trying to kind of get around to it through the rest of the presentation. I just think it's really helpful. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so it sounds like we have consensus on number one, two, and three. George has his hand up. George? So one, two, and three, I, I, I understand everyone's struggling with this. Um, I'm looking at at least three different documents um, and I'm not sure anymore what one, two, and three refers to. Um, I, I hear, uh, Alyssa makes an excellent point. It states in bold from the sponsor's point of view. The problem is I'm looking at a different document that doesn't have that in it. So um, I, I'm just struggling to, I, I want to approve this. I want us to get through it. But I just want to make sure I know what I'm approving. Sure. So when you say one, two, and three, are you referring to one, two, and three that's in Alyssa's document, or are you referring to the one, two, and three that's in your document? That's my I'm, question. I'm referring to my document, but I did agree to put the question the questions in in question form under the timing issues, um, and um, they are a little different in Alyssa's. Um, she added the issue of a public health emergency, uh, which I took out because I thought it might not even fall under this policy, uh, or under this process, I mean. So, but it's fine to leave it in. And I, the first question, the first timing issue was in George and Evans. So I, that's from theirs, when and how the measure came to TSO. Um, so um, I'm glad to add all four of them in question form. And then and when we get a, another version of this at the next meeting, that will be what is there. Evan has his hand up. Evan. Thank you, George. Uh, I'm because George expressed the confusion and the frustration. I think I'm also having. I'm wondering if um, we can. We we have a uh, a word document of this. So can and we have the ability to share screens. Can we just if we're since, if we're just editing this in real time? Can we literally just edit it in real time? Can someone just have their screen yeah. and we can edit this so we can see? I would prefer not to do that. Um, if that's okay. I'd rather go use this document because it incorporates both yours and Alyssa's and just would rather do that. But we're coming to consensus around changes and I don't even know what we've come to consensus around, what the changes are. We're adding our, under what, what says three but is should be four, I think. Are we swapping a through E out with what's under Alyssa's now? Uh, we haven't agreed to that yet. Um, the, when, uh, let's see. Uh, um, What do people feel about that? Darcy, I, I can't agree to something if I can't see what it is I'm agreeing to. And, and I, I understand it's difficult for everybody, including you particularly, but um, I can't say, you know, do you agree with one through three when I don't have the language of one through three in front of me? Um, and so we're gonna have to resolve that somehow. 
Um, otherwise, they can't, simply can't vote. Um, I, I think Alyssa's suggestions are great for wording. Uh, we can quibble about questions versus declarative statements, but uh, I think it should be added. Uh, maybe all of it should be added, but I just need to know what's being added and what isn't, and what's one, what's two, what's three, what's four. And if I don't know that, I can't approve it. I can't vote on it. Well, we're not voting today. So I, I can just come back with the revised language and we can look at it at the next meeting. Yeah. Um, so it's- uh, well, My we, point is, I don't know what the revised language we're even moving forward with is. What, what, we, Darcy to do. what we said was that we were going to keep one and two as is. Three, we are swapping out for Alyssa's questions in addition, we're adding a question for A. When and how the measure came to TSO. So those questions, Alyssa's questions, and when and how the measure came to TSO. So that will be under clarify timing issues. Mm -hmm. um, then in number four, we didn't really come to agreement, but I'm interested in knowing what the people in this committee feel. Uh, you know, I would, um, uh, I agree to all except I don't agree that the sponsors need to, um, let me go down here again. Um, I don't agree that they need to provide what information we'll need from town staff and the town attorney, because I don't think most sponsors have, um, some sponsors won't have any access to that and they won't be able to provide that. that that's our responsibility. Where George, the has, George has his hand up and Alyssa has her hand up. Um, George. Just very quickly, it's a small point, I apologize, but um, I agree with what you've described. I think we're all in agreement for one and two. I do have a question about Alyssa's question, of sub three, is this a public health or safety emergency? I don't really see, I, you took it out. I thought that made sense, but maybe the rest of you disagree. Are people okay with leaving it in? I don't feel real strong, but I do feel like, you know, why is that there? So other than that, I'm fine with what you've described for one and two. Um, and three, uh, and then four, we're going to have to talk about. Okay, so you're talking about summary of a proposed measure? That's okay. coming up. I'm talking about under Alyssa's number two, her uh, sub point number three, is this a public health or safety emergency? And I just, I'm just, why, why are we asking this question? And the answer may be because it makes sense, but I, I just struggle to see why they should be there. Are people want it in? Fine. Do they want it out? I'd take it out. You took it out. But maybe the three of you, other three of you think it should stay in. Maybe you don't care. That's my only question. Otherwise, I think you've described what you're going to do with one, two, and three. Um, yes. Okay. Um... Do other people have a feeling about taking out the public health and safety emergency? Uh, Alyssa has her hand up. Alyssa? She, she could explain why it's there rather than which, which would be helpful. And she could also re talk about the point that Darcy made about people, about not all the people coming to us will have knowledge of what town staff wants. So I'm really confused about which question I'm answering now, but I'm going to try and answer Darcy's question first, which she wasn't a question, it was a statement, which was that not everyone coming to us will know what town staff or town attorney input is needed. And that's totally fine, A, because this is from the sponsor's point of view. They can say, I don't know, that is a totally reasonable thing for them to say. I also want to emphasize that the vast majority, let's not talk about mathematical percentages, but the vast majority of materials we've dealt with so far are from fellow town counselors, not who absolutely know what kinds of things are, and I'm sure that's going to continue. So that's why that was in there. But again, it's clear that it's from the sponsor point of view. And if it's somebody from the outside, it's totally fine that they don't know the answer to that. It's just if they've already done something, they can say, hey, I talked to Dave Zomek about this. 
that's great information for us to have. Whereas if we don't ask for it, we won't know that they've already talked to staff about it. As to the public health and safety emergency, um, I'm trying really hard not to be facetious here, but that's how we had the excuse of doing the zoning bylaw mm -hmm. and the public way changes because we were saying there was an emergency. That's why we needed to act. So that's why I had it in there. I hope we never have to use it again. Maybe if we need water restrictions, though they probably won't be for the public way. I hope TSO never has to use it again, but that was actually one of the reasons we hurried up and dealt with both the zoning bylaw change, right, which we did as a full town council, but then also the public way recommendation. We said, sure, let the town manager and staff do whatever they want to get businesses ramped up. That sounds awesome. We did that because it was an emergency. That's why it's in there. I just lifted that from the charter idea. Okay, I, I would like to interrupt um, and call time on this discussion. Um, I know we're right in the middle of number one, uh, but I would like to um, just uh, take these general criteria that we've, uh, we are generally agreeing on and uh, use them to run through a practice go through a, a, with regarding a preliminary presentation about the surveillance technology bylaw. Um, and I did put something together, which I would just like to present and see if what people's reaction are to it. Melissa has her hand up. Um, no, that's a vestigial, sorry, leftover. I would like to. And I'm sorry to cut off this discussion sort of rudely in the middle of it. And I would like to just say that, that I will come back with what, I, what we appear to have agreed on so far with new language for the next meeting and then uh, maybe alternatives for um, the, of, of the proposed measure from the sponsor's point of view section. It seems and like that's going to be a lot of work for future me. <laughs> um, so uh, I would just like to go over this and Mandy Jo is here in case we need any background. Uh, oh, Darcy. Uh, I'm going to suggest that I bring Mandy Jo into the room, make her the host, and that I drop out. Okay. Okay. That will work, open meeting law wise. Um, so, um, two meetings ago, we had our first presentation on the surveillance technology bylaw, uh, an out, of, out of order presentation. Um, and our discussion was incomplete because members decided we should look at creating the review process um, in order to ensure we're, we were adequately prepared and that the process itself was adequately robust. Um, and at that time, Evan suggested that we use the te a surveillance technology bylaw as a first example of the review process. So anyway, we looked at, at it in a very cursory way at the last meeting. Um, but today I'd like to look at it by using some of these questions that we have very tentatively agreed on. Um, so, um, the surveillance technology bylaw is sponsored by two counselors, Mandy Jo Haneke and Pat DeAngelis. So, and you can follow along the questions on the review process, see if I'm answering them. Um, the reason why this bylaw is being reviewed by TSO is because under our charge, it is a measure that may affect the provision of services by a town department. And that's because it, it um, applies only to uh, surveillance technology by the town. Um, so it was referred to this committee by the town council on May 4th, I believe. You might have to check that with a report back uh, time of 90 days. Um, 
and it was also referred to GOL. Um, the sponsors would like to be heard on the proposal as soon as possible. Um, we have two documents in the packet regarding the surveillance technology. We have the, the proposed bylaw itself and we have a fact sheet. Um, so there's no currently no town bylaw pertaining to surveillance technology and no state law. Uh, though there are multiple bills pending in the state legislature. So, you know, this might be the time when we do get state, uh, a state law, since the, the, the same thing is going on in the state level with regard to interest in facial recognition technology, et cetera. Um, so it's not known right now what stakeholders will be interested in this bylaw, but possibilities include the Chamber of Commerce, downtown businesses, especially ones that are within view of the fire station where there is surveillance technology, um, um, downtown business owners and customers, possibly people particularly interested in privacy interests or ACLU or whatever. Um, I had occasion to speak with the town manager about getting staff feedback about the operation of the bylaw, and he suggested uh, possibly hearing from Anthony Delaney uh, and from the police chief. Um, they were possible presenters that he put forward. Um, and as far as best practices looked at, the sponsors modeled the bylaw after the Cambridge uh, ordinance, and in addition, Boston, Springfield, Northampton, Brookline, and Somerville have either enacted or are looking at passing surveillance technology ordinances. So um, right now is where I think that I would normally uh, throw out to the committee whether they have questions now or whether they want to like submit questions over the next few days that we could uh, pose to the sponsors so that they could answer them by the next meeting. Um, also, if you have any questions about additional staff that you can think of that we might wanna hear from, or additional organizations or stakeholders that you think we should hear from. Um, and yes, so that is my preliminary presentation. Thoughts? Questions? Um, I raised my hand. Yes, Dorothy. Oops, let me get rid of this. Okay, and and you may have, have, have answered this when I stepped out of the room briefly. Um, first, I want to know who has surveillance in the town. Um, what businesses, what uh, town offices, and what kind? Because I don't know what we have. And that, so that would be, first of all, how, is, there, is there any requirement anywhere that this be recorded? I mean, does the town know who has it or can a business just put in their cameras and the technology without informing anybody? So I don't know what rules we have on that. So, so this doesn't pertain to, to surveillance technology by anyone other than the town is my understanding. Mandy Jo, do you want do we want Mandy Jo to be answering questions now? Sure. Mandy Jo. Thank you. Um, this does not apply to businesses. It applies only to town and town departments. So um, whether businesses have it or not, um, if they do, this wouldn't affect them at all. If they don't, it wouldn't affect them at all. Um, I think in terms of the town, we don't know. And that's one of the reasons uh, Pat and I are seeking to enact this bylaw is so that it is out there and transparent what surveillance technology the town departments are using. But if private businesses have technology and there's a case, then the, the police or the courts can um, subpoena that technology. Um, so it's, 
it's just a partial thing to talk about what the town has. I mean, I think we obviously need to know, um, but um, it's not in a vacuum. And I think, I think the question is, we need to know all of who's got what kind of technology and who's in charge and what can be used and what protections people have. Otherwise, I mean, it's just a start. Um, do we have other questions? George? If this is supposed to be a model for how we're going to proceed in the future, we've already violated our policy that we haven't adopted it yet. Um, the preliminary presentation is done by uh, a member of the committee and there's no provision for sponsors to be present answering questions. Now, maybe we want to change that, but it seems that these kinds of questions and this kind of discussion would take place at the formal presentation and that, that what you're supposed to be modeling here is what the uh, chair or chair's designee is supposed to do to inform the committee of where we stand. Now, right. I'm glad Mandy's here. And I have lots of questions too, but um, I, I don't think that in terms of the process, at least, that that's what we're supposed to be doing right now. We're supposed to be just, you're supposed to be telling us what you've got from the sponsor, and then we're supposed to tell you um, what we want from the sponsor. Now, it turns out the sponsor is a counselor, and she's a very amenable and, 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 and pleasant counselor who's willing to take her time and come here when I'm sure she has many other things that she'd like to be doing. And that's all well and good, but that's not actually the way we're supposed to proceed. And in the future, I assume we won't proceed this way. Um, or the, co the committee needs to say, no, this is great. We want to have, if the sponsor can show up at the preliminary presentation, yeah, let them come too. Um, so, I, so I let's did be consistent about what the process is and, and let's model it correctly. Um, a lot of you are interested in this bylaw and you have good questions about it. And we could have a grand old conversation about it for the next hour. But that's, I've got, well, I won't say what I have better things to do, but it's just not what we're supposed to be doing right now. Yeah. Yes, I totally agree, George. And uh, that's why I asked the question of the committee whether we should ask Mandy Jo a question now. Um, so um, I, I agree that we should just gather our questions. This is the time for us to answer those threshold questions and to just gather our questions. And I know that um, it's possible that the committee members don't feel adequately prepared to ask the questions right now to, for our list. But if you could send me any questions that you have for the sponsors, um, within the next three days, um, that would be helpful. And, and then they would have enough time to prepare before then. Well, actually a week would be fine. I'll, I'll send an email giving a deadline um, because our next meeting isn't until July 23rd. We have a little bit more time. So um, there are three hands up. I don't know whether you can see the hands, Darcy. Okay. That's why I'm saying that. Sorry. The Sorry. order is Evan, George, and Alyssa. No, I can see them. Evan. So, right. So, I mean, this is, when, I, when I suggested we use this as a, as a practice, I assumed we would adopt the process before we tried implementing it. So I'm, I'm still not clear even what questions we're looking at. Um, that said, it seems to me like this preliminary conversation should be addressing what Darcy said, not necessarily our questions initially about the bylaw to Mandy. Um, and so two things, one is I'm not clear on the staff mentioned, the stakeholders mentioned, Darcy, are those ones that you thought of or are those ones that came from the sponsor who said, these are the people that we've identified? So that's question hey. one. It came from the town manager. It came from the town manager. Okay, and then uh, all of, including the the state, the businesses, the all that yeah. stuff. That that came from me. Okay, so that that's an important because I wasn't clear. There were a lot of these are the people we should talk to, and it wasn't clear who that came from. I was assuming it actually came from the sponsor, which of course my question was then going to be. Why is the sponsor telling us what stakeholders are important to engage but didn't engage them? But I think we need to have a conversation about them. So I'm not completely clear why the Chamber of Commerce is listed as a stakeholder that we need input from since this is something that only applies to towns. However, what I didn't hear but is featured in the bylaw 
is the idea that one of the, imp uh, the impetus behind this bylaw is the way that facial recognition technology has often been um, problematic for marginalized communities. That's a, that's a big piece of the bylaw. Um, is that a group of stakeholders that we want to try to engage? I, I think this is the conversation we need to be having in the preliminary conversation. I don't agree that the Chamber of Commerce is actually a stakeholder we need to talk to. I do wonder about um, if there is a way to talk to other stakeholders who are impacted by surveillance technology by the town and specifically by the departments that, that we've listed, which of course primarily is the police department. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so thank you, Evan. Um, George? So again, I just a, pro a process question. Are we doing this for real? Yes. Or is this just practice? I, 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 because if we're doing it for real, uh, I wasn't prepared, and that's my fault, perhaps. In other words, it was in the packet. Uh, we do have information from, uh, we do have the bylaw, it's been referred to us, but I wasn't, uh, and it may be my fault here, that I was prepared that we're actually going to be doing this for real. We're actually having a actual preliminary presentation today, as opposed to what I thought it was, was, well, if we ever do adopt a process like the one we're looking at, this is how it might look if we did it. So is, is it the latter? Right. Or is it, this is for real, and Mandy's here because she's actually going to be, you know, uh, I just don't know. Is, what are we doing? The, it is, it's an actual preliminary presentation. But, but, but how can it be? You said you, we were modeling it. Modeling isn't doing. Modeling is just a practice activity. Okay, is there a problem with... Yeah, you said, I thought we, was gonna, we were going to kind of play around with it and see how it went. We, but we, not that we were doing it. We don't have the, the, the whole point of having a preliminary presentation is that the members of the committee don't have to be prepared and like they would have to be for the formal presentation. And so it's a time when anyone can put on the agenda a can ask to put on the agenda a preliminary presentation. And so it's, that's the whole purpose of it, it's preliminary. And but so- I'm talking about the word modeling, Darcy. Yeah. Modeling isn't doing. But I, but we did just do it, and so- But that's why George wasn't prepared, because you said modeling. You don't have to be prepared. We don't have to be prepared for a preliminary presentation. But we do within the next week or so. I would like to get your questions about the um, about the upcoming formal presentation. So we do we don't want to have. I mean, this was a reaction to all of you being concerned about putting something on the agenda that we that we aren't prepared for, and so. Now we have this process to have a preliminary presentation. And this is the example of a preliminary presentation. And I just am wondering why it doesn't count in your mind as a preliminary presentation. <laughs> uh, and- He says, we're gonna practice your recital. It's not the recital, it's a practice. And so I, I'm an English professor, I'm sorry. It was, it's just a language thing. I, it didn't communicate to me properly. So maybe it's just my brain, okay? But I got a different idea. So when the question was, okay. is this for real? To me, it was obvious that no, it's not for real. It's just a practice, it's a modeling. Alyssa's had her hand up for a while. Sorry. Alyssa? So I had, if this was actually the process, if we were actually doing this, which I believe you're the only person, Darcy, who believes we're actually doing this. We all believed that this was just a great example of, here are the words, now how do they actually translate to a practice? And we could go, oh, oh, well, this is missing. Oh, well, that makes sense. And it's informing what we're writing in that document, right, that you're revising and bringing back to us. It is not 
at all the preliminary presentation for a couple of reasons. One is we can't unsee what we saw at the previous <laughs> surveillance technology proposal. So it's not cold. It's not with no information. So I appreciate what you said about this may be the rare occasion in theory when you do a preliminary introductory type presentation that we know nothing about it coming into a meeting, that we come in completely cold. We're not coming in completely cold to this. We can't unwind that. And we weren't told that we were doing it for real today. And so I think it just, I'm looking at it as it was a good exercise in terms of figuring out, oh, that's what the words we wrote in the process mean mm -hmm. for what it's gonna look like to do one. And now as we revise the process, we'll look at that again and we'll go, yeah, that's what we meant when we did that. In no way, shape or form is it appropriate at this point, I think, for us to say, these are our questions. And I also object to the idea that you're going to solicit those questions between now and the next meeting. The next meeting is when we're going to look at the process again. We are not ready to do the surveillance technology bylaw this week or the next time. We need to finish our process first. Evan? Yeah, so I, I will second every sentence that Alyssa just uttered. Um, but since we're talking process, um, one thing that has been mentioned but wasn't actually discussed beforehand was the idea of committee members sending individual questions to the chair. Um, the way I always had envisioned this was we would have this preliminary presentation and then a discussion as a committee as to who does the committee want to hear from, staff, community, stakeholders, whatever, and what are the questions of the committee? I don't want each, of, I, I don't personally feel comfortable with the idea of each of us sitting there after this meeting, reading through the bylaw going, what are my questions? And then the sponsor having this big list, I would rather us discuss it as a committee and then send questions to the sponsor that says, here are, here is the information requested by the committee and here are the questions of the committee. I think that's a, a better way to do it. It requires a bigger discussion in the council. It's gonna take up more time, I mean, in the council on the committee, it's gonna take up more time, but it, it means that we have some consensus on this committee about what we are asking the sponsor for. Because you know, what if, what if I decided, you know what, I really want her to talk to Mike Morris. That's that, you know, which and no one else agrees that right why should why should i just send a question and then darcy you as chair would have to figure out well am i going to ask the sponsor to get feedback from mike morris or you know what i mean something like that it seems better for us to have a discussion about it first other thoughts um i i agree that we should discuss as a group because when you're listening to other people talk and bring up their things, it helps you clarify what's in your mind. And we, we do work, if not to a consensus, we work towards a consensus or to a, a, at least a shared understanding of what the issues and the conflicts might be. Um, and I mean, the problem with the open meeting law is that so many conversations that I would like to have, can't have, don't happen. And I just feel that, that um, we are social beings, we are a town council, we are, underneath it all is an idea that, that more heads than one are better, and that somehow from amongst us, we will come up with some reasonable stuff. So I, I like the idea of our coming up with our questions together. We may, you may ask us to refine them, you know, or whatever, but um, I, I think it's important that we do that together for that, the first questioning session. George? Two quick thoughts. One is that um, as chair of GOL, you have my uh, deepest sympathy because you face a really difficult job here. This is not easy to do. Um, and so this is a process we're all struggling with. Um, I would just make a suggestion for the agenda in the future that if you plan to have a preliminary presentation that in the agenda item, you list it as preliminary presentation, colon, and then whatever it is. Um, that way, at least as chair, you've notified us that there's a preliminary presentation coming. And if someone like yours truly 
is clueless. It's his fault because he's not paying attention. Um, but that's not what it says on the agenda. Um, and I think just going forward that if you do plan uh, to have a preliminary presentation, make sure that it's clearly stated in the agenda. I'd also ask you, and you don't have to do this, but I, I try to put the agenda in the SharePoint folder as well. Um, it's, it's not a big problem, but I, I'm in the folder and I'm you know, printing stuff out or whatever, and then I have to go off to the town website to find the agenda. Um, it's a small thing, but if you could do that as well, that would be helpful. But um, what you're trying to do here is hard. This is not easy. Um, and this is a committee that has a, a pretty complicated remit and we're struggling with it. So um, it's not about you, it's about this whole complicated process. Um, but just anyway, suggestion about the agenda in terms of letting us know ahead of time just by labeling it. Yeah, the agenda is in there now. Um, and the agenda did, does say preliminary presentation, although it may say example of preliminary presentation. Um, Not the same thing. So I guess we had different interpretations of what that meant. Um, so um, I feel like there, uh, you know, I have heard from um, the sponsors their desire to try to get this done um, more quickly because of the facial recognition piece of it. Um, and that is part of why I wanted to put this on the agenda today um, and to get it on the agenda for the next meeting. And I disagree very much that we should wait until we finish all of our process issues before we do anything. We, we, uh, we talked for 45 minutes about the, the public policy issue today. We didn't put that on the back burner. Um, so, and we didn't use any review process whatsoever looking at it. So we have the ability to do what we want to do. And I think that we shouldn't, we should be able to continue to look at issues. There's no harm in going forward with the surveillance technology bylaw. And we should be doing it so that we are relevant to the, to the um, police department process that's going forward at the same time, in my opinion. Um, so um, I will do more thinking about this before the next meeting, but I probably will solicit questions from you and we'll, we'll figure out and we'll figure out whether um, we have to take a whole other two weeks so that we can look at those questions together. Um, I, I do see the merit in doing that, looking at the questions together, obviously, but um, uh, let me just see what the questions are. If they're, if they're, you know, if they're none that are too crazy, <laughs> maybe we can just use them. Um, but so if let's try not to, to answer hand up, please. Not to go too far afield with our questions. Um, um, so uh, I think that that. Uh, what I do want is for everybody to really uh, look over the rest of the review process and um, also start looking at the rubric for ideas about how we can use the rubric in the future. Um, because who knows when we'll get to that. <laughs> we, I doubt if we'll get to it at the next meeting. We, do, we did definitely need that meeting on July 23rd. So, um, uh, I'm just going to leave it at that, that, um, that I will still be soliciting your questions and we'll figure out. Um, Why do you think you get to decide this, Darcy? This is not going to fly. I mean, just heard, I mean, I would second Alyssa's point that I'm not willing to go forward on anything until we figure out the process. 
So the fact that you're going to put this on the agenda next time is a big problem for me. Um, we need to solve the process. I, I think we're there. We're almost there, but we need to mm -hmm. get that resolved before we start uh, taking on issues like something as complicated as this. And I appreciate that maybe you or the sponsor are in a hurry, but I'm not in a hurry, at least not so much in a hurry, that I'm going to take this on without a process agreed upon. So we don't have an agreed upon process and I'm not going, I'm not going to discuss this next time if we don't have a process. You can have a meeting, committee meeting with four people. Issues have we discussed so far without a process? Darcy, I've had my hand up a long time. Sorry, Dorothy. Can we add another meeting? I notice there's a whole month between our next meetings. No, if we, we did add that. another meeting, we could finish our process, come to our understanding on our process, and then move forward on other items. You saw that we did add a meeting, right? Well, July 23rd. Um, a month from now. Short of short. I see that we have the today's meeting, the 29th of June, and then we have a meeting on July 23rd. There's a long, almost a full month between those two dates. We could add another meeting in which we could complete the pub, the, our process discussions, and then we'd be able to, to slowly move forward, you know, trying to use our process and then maybe even refining it after that. But we need to come to an understanding on the process before we take action. And that meeting could help us. I mean, I, I've, I mean, listen, I don't want meetings either, but it is a big, it's a big piece, of, a big gap. And I think we're very close to coming to an understanding of how we're going to proceed. But I'm just throwing that out there. Okay, well, it looks like everyone wants to um, just continue with um, I, I, I don't think we're going to agree, get an agreement on an additional meeting unless I'm wrong about that. We'll find tell, me, tell me if I'm wrong. Um, George? I personally agree with Dorothy that this is extremely important for this committee to get the damn, excuse me, get the process settled. Yeah. And um, it's up to the other members to say what they think. But if that requires an extra meeting to get it settled so that we can then proceed to deal with the actual business of the committee, I'm willing to deal with another meeting. Um, but that's just me. And Dorothy seems to agree. But I don't know how the rest of you feel. But um, we could wait to the 23rd, but that meeting will be consumed by process. And hopefully we'll decide at that point, And then we can then turn to the, the actual business of the, of the committee. But I am unwilling to, to proceed with the business of this committee uh, without a process. So yes, I'd be willing to, to have another meeting if the rest of you are willing. Evan? So uh, I think there's a possibility for another meeting. I, I, it would be tough in my calendar. I'm away for an entire week in mid-July. Of course, you can still get quorum without me. I do agree that I think we should nail down a process. We said wage theft by law was a, um, a sort of, we did that without a process for some reasons, which I, and I think actually it came back to bite us a little bit that we did that without a process. Um, so I don't want to do this without a process. I understand the feeling um, of urgency for this because of the racial element. Um, you know, I, I do sometimes wonder since the big thing is the facial recognition. And I think that's the simpler if, if maybe we almost if there's almost a possibility of breaking up the bylaw and doing that piece first. But um, I think that, uh, I, I guess I'm curious, given budgets and everything right now, um, since a lot of this is about the acquisition of surveillance technology, um, if the feeling of this is just, there's a lot of conversation about racial justice right now, so this is the time to do it, or if there's actually a feeling that there might be a purchase of surveillance technology in the near future, and that's the urgency, because I think those are two very different things. Do you know anything about that, Mandy Jo? So uh, Evan hits the nail on the head, I would say. We're in the middle of budget season. We have seen some desire for from the public for body camera purchases. I have, I do not know, we'll, we'll find out when the budget comes in, whether um, the police department intends to purchase any type of surveillance technology. But if they do, and this bylaw is not adopted, we wouldn't have any mechanism for actually 
making that transparent, um, questioning it, having a process for when that technology uh, data gets used or gets disseminated or how it gets disseminated or not and how long it gets kept. Um, so, so it's not just the facial recognition ban that uh, the sponsors feel is urgent. It is also because we are in the middle of budget season and there are calls for specifically the purchase of surveillance technology um, for police purposes for these reasons. And so that's, that's the other reason why we would like to move on it sooner rather than later. Okay. Um, so am I hearing from the committee that they want to add a, add a meeting? It's possible we could meet the, the week of September 16th. 16th is the, um, the week before our 23rd meeting on a Thursday night. Um, we could conceivably do that. Mm -hmm. Alyssa, Darcy, you have hands up. up. Yeah. Alyssa? Yeah, I, I'm totally okay with adding another meeting. I'm totally not okay with assuming that surveillance technology is going to be on the July 23rd agenda as our next item. Um, just like at all, even if with, with adding the meeting, but I certainly wouldn't think we'll know by the end of our meeting, if we do it that week, that um, we will be able to determine that. And the other thing I just wanna mention as an aside with surveillance technology and body cameras, there's going to have to be a long process working through the union to whether to, for usage of body cameras. We can't just buy body cameras and tell people to start using them. It doesn't work that way. So the likelihood that we're going to be setting aside money for a purchase for something that can't be implemented immediately, given the constraints on our budget, does seem relatively low at this point. So I'm seeing it as a relatively low risk, though I totally appreciate the need to bring transparency to it. We don't want anything snuck in on us, but that's the town manager's responsibility at this time, given where we are, given public sentiment, given our clearly expressed desire to know about this. If the town manager allows a technology purchase to be snuck into this, then we have a problem with our town manager. So this is not something that they're going to be proposing for this year because they don't have any agreement with their staff yet to use body cameras, and that's why you don't see them very widely used in the entire Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Okay, so um, I guess I feel like the, the reason that we are pushing uh, an additional meeting is because committee members do see the need to get going with the surveillance technology bylaw. Well, if if you don't, then there's no reason for an additional meeting. I think it's like we can't do anything unless until we've agreed upon our process. So whatever else comes down the way, even something we haven't even thought about, we, we feel we must get the process done. It's complicated with all the words in the different versions. A feeling that we're not that far apart, but that we should complete the process. Right, but and there's no to add a meeting if we're, there's no agreement. I mean, I'm getting the sense from the committee, except for Alyssa, possibly, that there, that we would be doing this because we want to allow the process for the surveillance technology bylaw to move along. That's not my reasoning. George. That's, that's not my reasoning either. I have to, I guess I just have to speak up. Uh, I said nothing about that at all. I'm just talking about process. And as Dorothy pointed out, we really shouldn't be doing anything of substance. And Evan also alluded to this with the wage theft bylaw. We really shouldn't be doing anything of substance until we finally agree on a process. Um, that does not mean that I agree that we need to rush uh, the process in order to get to this, this right. Uh, right. suggested bylaw. I actually don't think that. Um, I'm willing to be changed. I'm willing to have my mind changed at the moment. I don't, that's not my reasoning. It's just to get the process done. And if people are satisfied with the 23rd as a date, that's okay by me. Um, but uh, it's not, my decision is not uh, based on uh, any hurry uh, with any particular bylaw or proposal in front of this committee. 
You guys are tough. <laughs> Just careful. Um, uh, okay, so uh, uh, I'm leaning toward not adding an extra meeting if you want to know the truth. Um, so um, we are running late right now. Um, I was hoping that we would um, look at the the um, calendar, the 2020 calendar agenda, but I, I, I'm i perfectly willing to leave that until the, the next time, although I think it's really important for everybody to look at and see what you think about it, um, whether there are things on there that are way off or whatever you think. Um, but uh, unless you are willing to look at it right now, um, Alyssa has her hand up. Alyssa? I wanted to make a comment about the additional meeting. I would be happy, as much as I am tired of Zoom, to add another meeting only because while this information is fresh, last time we met the 15th, I presented my information to you that afternoon the 15th. You then got additional input from George and Evan, none of which I saw until near the end of last week. So a long time period was in between there and I kind of lost the thread of some of our conversation. So if it would help you, because you're not going to be out of town, um, to, to get the revisions done, which we appreciate you doing on our behalf, um, for a meeting sooner than the 23rd, that we could read the stuff before, you know, and absorb all of it well before the next meeting, I'd be happy to do that. But if simply because your summer schedule, which I totally understand a lot of people have a lot of commitments in the summer, um, want to wait till the 23rd, I just don't want to not think about this again until the 20th. I, I don't want that long of a gap in between. But if if that's what works for your schedule, I'm saying I'm giving you that flexibility. I was just trying to make it clear it wasn't in order to get to the surveillance technology bylaw. So if you're fine with waiting until the 23rd, but hopefully getting us a revision well before in advance, not 48 hours or 72 hours in advance of the 23rd, then I'm good with that. If you feel like you have the time to do it sooner, then I'm happy to have a meeting sooner. And if you don't want to decide that yet, if you people should probably check their calendars though for that date right now and you could decide after a day or two if you think you'll be ready for it because it's because the burden really is on you at this point because of the revision of the process right like i i, I like I, I would be glad to put a get uh, together the revision and get it out to you all um and um i um, you know, we just added the meeting on the 23rd, so I, I don't think there's really any need for another meeting on the 16th, if, if there's no, if there's any, if we're not, uh, if there isn't any specific reason for doing so. Um, so, um, okay, um, let me get the damn thing. Raising my hand. I don't see. Oh, Dorothy. Okay. Um, Darcy, we don't know what's happening. We don't know the future. We're in a very uncertain time. We are, you know, town council is very, very important now. We're helping to keep the town of Amherst going and running. I would like for TSO to be ready to proceed with whatever whatever we want to do in a way that we can do it in a unified way. So unless it's just totally difficult and message up your summer, I would really like to have the meeting on July 16th so that we can have our procedure together for whatever comes our way and we don't know what it is. But I feel that we're, we're in a crisis situation, which I don't mind being in, okay? I'm from the generation that, you know, we're. I'm really from like, you know, a little girl in World War II. I want to be ready for whatever we have to do. So I'm for adding the meeting. Do we, do we want to vote on it or do we just? I'd like to vote on it. Unless, and I think Alyssa tried very hard to make it clear that she did not want to mess up your summer, that we all know you're working extremely hard um, as chair of this committee. And if there's a reason why this would really mess up your one fun moment, 
We don't want to do that. But if we can do it without such a cost, it would be good to do it. Yeah, it, it's possible that it would. Um... Okay, well, I mean, that's, that's, you know, something that we have to think about because, you know, people have a right to having some life. Yeah, I'm taking the week after 4th of July, which would be the week when I'd have to get everything in. Well, yeah. Um, so it would be difficult. Um, not, probably not impossible, but uh, close, close. Okay. <laughs> so, and uh, everybody make a meeting that day because I'm, I gotta say, what if, what if something comes up and we don't finish it in one meeting? That's one of the reasons I'd like to go with the 16th and have the 23rd still available to us if there's something we still need to hammer out and then be doing other things as well. It's putting it, I don't know if we realistically can finish on the 16th, given that we also have to fold in the public ways process. So that means if we don't meet the 16th, I don't know if we can finish everything on the 23rd. So it's, if you want to add it and then cancel it and say, you know what, realistically, I can't do this, that's fine. But if you think there's a tentative reason to meet, then I would like to do it. It's just so that I have it in my calendar and don't use it up with something else. But if all five of us can't be there on the 16th, then I say, let's just throw it out all together. Can all of us be there the 16th? I, I cannot be there on the 16th, okay, but I am, I am also, I trust y'all enough to, to do it without me. If, if, if there's, if the majority of this committee feels like a meeting on the 16th would be useful, I am happy to send it out, but I can't be there on the 16th. If you feel comfortable that if we, if we, you know, if we have like split votes or whatever, that we could then just continue the conversation on the 23rd, because you'll be back on the 23rd. But if we could get through a bunch of the material, but if you're not going to have a chance to see the revision at all before we do that, then that's not very practical either. So I don't know. Okay. Um, I was going to say, this is the moment when George usually steps in and tells us what to do. But uh, I was just waiting for you to do it. Um, George, where are you? We need some I, we could, I, if we meet on the 16th, we can do most of it, get a copy to Evan, and so that when we meet on the 23rd, we all get together, we're all on the same page, and we finalize the process, hopefully without much time at the beginning of the meeting, so we can then move forward with something else. Also, if, if I see the revision, I can submit comments to a single member to bring to the meeting so my perspective is shared. Although I do also think that I've been vocal enough in at least my key priorities in the process that you all know where I stand on some of those things. So I am comfortable with you guys working in my absence on the 16th. Okay. Uh, um, I, I, I guess I feel like I really don't want to meet on the 16th um, and that it would be a pretty, a pretty much of a hardship. Um, okay. So I would like to reject that idea. I'm pretty amazed that this group is like pushing so hard for an additional meeting <laughs> when we just got another additional meeting, you know, so, and no one was asking for a meeting in that five week period. So that's crazy. Um, but um, anyway. Dorsey, I, George has had his hand up for a while. Sorry, George. I'll change the topic. Um, I'm looking at the TSO calendar 2020. It has my name down for Spring Street and it has Spring Street as a projected uh, item sometime in August. So Am I to understand that at the moment, at least, you are expecting me to be a presenter of that on that date? Is that what that means? You had a long time ago volunteered for that, and that's why I put your name there. But if you don't want that, you, I'm, and you know, if the the public way um, policy gets, you know, we don't know that if, that that's even going to be referred to us. 
Um, just, you know, I just want to understand what this document is and um, that um, right now, the only other person besides myself that's on the hook is uh, Dorothy, um, but that's how we're envisioning these sorts of assignments to be done, um, which is, you know, I mean, I, obviously I had agreed to it. I think Dorothy had also agreed to the parking, um, but that's what that means. Okay, good. It's only because you had brought no, it up. No, I, I'm not, yeah, I'm just, I agree. So other people want to attach their names to other things, they are welcome to let me know. And um, uh, do we want to look at that document now or do we want to wait until another meeting? Um, because I'm happy not to look at that now if people aren't. It, it's afternoon. Yeah, we. I'm hungry. <laughs> well, let's be practical. <laughs> lunch. Um, no, uh, so I do not, I'm going to just. I'm going to entertain a motion to adjourn. Pretty soon, yes. Um, yes. Yeah, there are, uh, that was, you know, we were going to talk about that under the next meeting agenda preview, uh, but we basically know we're going to be talking about the review process. We're going to be, is, did Lynn say that she was bringing back the public uh, way policy? Yes. Um, and um, we don't have any other things anticipated in the last 48 hours. And uh, yes, um, I move to adjourn until the 23rd. I'll, I'll second that motion. Do you want to call the question? All the, oh, oh, do we have to have a roll call? Yeah, we do. Well, at least we always do it. I should declare. I'm going to declare. Just declare. Okay. Well played. <laughs> One thing that was well played today. See you all uh, soon. Tonight. Yes. Oh, God. Yes. Hours from now. Yes, yes, yes.